die, monster. You don't belong in this world. I was not the monster. But enough talk. <laughs> Nothing personal, cat. Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to beat Kenshi as a martial artist. Now for this run we will be using one gameplay altering mod, no matrix dodge, as it will help prevent us from getting dodge locked by our opponents. Getting started with the game itself, choose the holy sword start and select skeleton as your race. Not only are skeletons objectively more powerful in most ways than other races, but their physiology is required for one of the specific training methods I have in mind. Now your first objective is to sell the sword you looted from some dead guy, and while some people might hate your thieving guts, the Holy Nation already hated you for being a skeleton, and the Imperial Lords are a leftover from an old version of the game, they don't really exist anymore. You still have a 20k bounty in the United Cities, but bounties only matter if you get caught. Anyways, after your sword rakes in a fat stack of cats, you should buy a couple of repair kits for the road. Don't sell your clothes, since the ninja shirt you started out with boosts your assassination skill, and you'll be needing that pretty soon. Now just leg it from the border zone to this broken down tower over here in Venge. Watch out for beak things along the way. If you do end up getting beaked and you're not able to recover, then just reload a previous save and try it again. There's no shame in it. Now go into the old tower, all the way up to the top floor where the prisoner is, and jump into the cage next to him so his captors will leave you alone. His name's Agnu, by the way, and he's going to be your partner in crime from here on out. So pick your own lock first, but don't escape just yet. Then pick the lock on Agnu's cage, and once he's out, he'll join your squad, so the two of you can make your escape. You probably won't be able to outrun your pursuers, so just let them beat you into the dirt, and whichever of you gets up first can rescue the other. Once you're both on your feet, you should head towards the Skin House HQ. You might get pursued by some big boys along the way, but don't be afraid. If no one else has your back, Flats Lagoon has your back. For upon the stairway to Flats Lagoon have many evildoers been knocked out cold. And what about the times when you're far from Flats Lagoon? Well, as the old saying goes, you don't have to outrun the gorilla, you just have to outrun the guy next to you. So yeah, have fun with that bug boy. Once you get to the skin house HQ, you'll meet up with some friendly humans, and they'll let you use their skeleton repair beds for free. Because empathy is an important part of human behavior. Next up on your journey is the Ash Dome where Catlon resides. The locals will be less than friendly towards you, but since they're skeletons and skeletons don't run very fast, they won't be able to catch you. And once you get to Catlon's Exile, you'll want to loop around on the right side to avoid the dome on the left, because it's full of enemy robots. Then let your pursuers kick the snot out of you so they'll go away. Now enter the dome on the right, and this is where you'll find Catlon on his throne. Then before he finishes his little speech, you should make a new save. Then load the save, and Catlon's brain will break, and he won't attack you. Now rapidly click the right mouse button on him while sneaking, and your assassination skill will shoot up faster than a tourist in Amsterdam. Not that I'd know anything about that, of course. Anyways, once your assassination skill is high enough, you should be able to knock him out. Now the reason we brought Agnu is because he has 50 strength, so he'll be able to carry Catlon out of the Ashlands without being slowed down. Then head back to the Skin House HQ, wait until night time, and then pick up the leader of the humans while he sleeps. Take all his stuff while holding him, most of it is pretty valuable. 
Then just put him back where you found him. You can use Catlon as a duffel bag so you won't get weighed down by all the items you stole. Then read the leader's blueprint so you can learn how to build a peeler. Your next stop is Flats Lagoon, as they tend to carry a lot of cash. You might get chased by some bug boys along the way, but remember, there's always a bigger bug. Circle of life, baby. Now sell off some of your expensive stuff at Flats Lagoon. Buy yourself a couple of wooden backpacks, if they have them. If you want to be able to sell Catlon's AI core and CPU, then you'll need to throw him on the ground, and just as he regains consciousness, pause the game and rip his guts out. If you don't get the surgical timing right, then he'll die, so make sure you save before doing this. Then afterwards, save and reload so he goes non-hostile, knock him out, and make your way towards Black Desert City. Now there are dust bandits patrolling the road on the way there, but there are also beak things. So, you know where this is going. And while some bandits may not give up even when the skin is melting off their bones, a good old slap to the face should finish them off. Now once you're in the city, buy yourself a pair of industrial lifter arms and a pair of scout legs of the best quality available, and use Catlon's innards to pay for it. Don't sell his armor though, as you'll be needing that later. Next, you should travel along this trade route I've laid out for you so you can buy the rest of the things that you'll be needing for your specialized martial arts training. Acquire a total of two wooden backpacks and six building materials. Then go to Vein so you can buy one low-quality economy right leg and a pair of prototype-grade economy arms. Now, it is important that the arms are prototype-grade, so you may need to visit several villages to find a pair. And the last place you want to stop at is Mongrel, and fear not. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of fog, you shall fear no evil, for you are faster than the fogmen. Now Mongrel is filled to the brim with supplies, so go ahead and stock up on repair kits and anything else you need that you haven't gotten yet. And if any homeless people approach you, then turn them away. You have a hard journey ahead of you, and you can't let fleshy people slow you down. So make your way up to Burn's Tower, and then recruit Burn himself. Burn will choose to work for you for free, and more importantly, he has a free skeleton repair bed. So use your building materials to build a small shack near Burn's tower, and within that shack build a peeler. First up for the peeler queue is Catlon, of course. Now while he's in the peeler, repair him, but only enough so that he loses his right leg. Once that's done, take him out and put your main guy in instead. And this time all the limbs are coming off. And don't worry, skeletons don't feel pain, which is why I have no ethical qualms with anything we've done or what we're about to do. Now once your limbs are off, equip the economy arms and the scout legs, because now it's finally time to train up the main stats that you'll be needing as a martial artist. First up is martial arts, and the way martial arts works is it will level as you punch things, and the higher your opponent's attack stat is in comparison to your own, the faster it will level. So, give Catlon your ninja rags to boost his martial arts skill, and wear his armor to lessen your own. Then put Catlon in the skeleton repair bed. He won't be able to get up since he's missing a leg. Then set Burn and Agnew to start mining the iron deposit outside. And while they're doing that, have your main guy start kicking the snot out of Catlon. This will not only rapidly raise your martial arts, but also your strength. Because the more over-encumbered you are, the faster your strength will go up when punching. As you get stronger, you'll need to keep increasing how much you're carrying, so that's why our boys outside are breaking iron and filling up two backpacks with it. You will need to fill their backpacks manually, so don't walk away from your computer just yet. But if you do need to step away for a while, then you should at least pick up Catlon and make a save, since if you save and reload while he's in bed, then he'll teleport out of bed and crawl away. You should also keep an eye on your miners, since there are a few iron spiders that roam this area. By the way, you won't have to worry about draining Catlon's HP all the way, since using the economy arms and being over-encumbered will make you hit like a wet noodle. When the first backpack is filled, put it in your inventory and get back to work, then do the same for the second. Thus, when all the mining is done, you're free to step away from your computer while your guy trains. With both backpacks full of iron, you won't need Catlon's armor anymore, so you might want to put it back on him. You'll punch faster, and therefore level faster without it on. 
and you can stop training when you get to 80 strength and martial arts in the high 90s. Since your industrial lifter arms and ninja gear are going to boost those stats to over 100 at this point anyways. Now the next phase of training will require a change of location, so put your industrial lifter arms on, pick up Catlon, and head back the way you came. Your scout legs will make you faster than any potential pursuers, and you won't be slowed down from carrying Catlon because of your immense strength. Now your current goal is to acquire the crappiest quality katana you can find, and you should hopefully be able to purchase or loot one from one of these locations. A rusted junk grade wakizashi would be ideal, but a rusted grade ninja blade works almost as well. Then go to Black Desert City, sell all your iron, and buy a full set of masterwork limbs if you haven't already. You can put Catlon in a skeleton bed while you change your legs, so that you don't risk dropping him and having him crawl away. Now return to the Skin House HQ. Enter the throne room of their leader, close the door, and head up to the second floor. Equip Catlon with the katana and the economy leg, and swap armor with him. Then put him down and wait for him to wake up, and after finishing his little speech, he'll rush to attack you. So lure him to one of the other skin houses, close the door, and hop into a skeleton bed. Catlon will then begin mercilessly thrashing you with his katana, doing minimal damage since skeletons are resistant to katanas, of course. And what this is doing is building up our dodge skill, since dodge doesn't actually go up from successfully dodging, but from getting hit while being unarmed. This is also beginning to train our toughness, but not really by much because of the low damage. And the best thing is that this portion of our training is entirely hands-free, so you can step away from your computer once again. And once your dodge skill reaches 91, save and reload. Close the door if you didn't earlier, then hide in the corner so Catlon attacks the humans instead of you. They will eventually bring him down, at which point you can reclaim your ninja garb. Then deleg Catlon and put him to bed so he's out of the way. Now attack your human friends unprovoked. Didn't see that one coming, did ya? Then pause the game, remove your arms and legs, quickly unpause and pause again, and re-equip your legs. This will cause you to play dead in front of them. Then get up from playing dead, but unequip your legs again before you get bonked by them. Repeat this process over and over, and every time you get up from playing dead, your toughness stat will massively increase. This process is tedious and highly involved, but it shouldn't actually take too much time to get your toughness up to 90. Taking the time to get it any higher might actually drive you insane, and I'd prefer that didn't happen to you, because I like you. Anyways, once you're done training, re-equip your arms and legs and flee the skin house. These boys won't actually leave their skin house, and the guys outside won't actually be mad at you. And just look at all those juicy stats after only 19 in-game days of training. Well, martial arts gets a skill boost from being indoors, but still. And in fact, we can do even better with better gear. So head over to the anti-slavers in spring. Here you'll meet Tin Fist. I would advise that you don't try messing with him, since he's basically you, but better. Now find an anti-slaver with sleeveless dust coat armor, knock him out, and steal it from him. This will give you a good amount of protection on everything except your arms, and it will also boost your attack damage by 5%. Now run like the wind if you don't want a tin fist shaped hole in your chest. Then again, besides tin fist, none of the anti-slavers really stand a chance against you. In fact, I think I killed one of them here. Oh well, totally worth it. Anyways, with Masterwork Scout legs on you, you can cross the map in no time. So run back to the guy that kidnapped Ognu, and kick the snot out of him. Kick the snot out of his little minions as well. Paint the sands black with their oil. And take the kidnapper to the United Cities to collect his bounty. Of course, you still have a bounty on your own head, so you'll have to turn him in quickly. Then sell his weapon, and buy yourself some samurai cloth pants. These will provide decent protection to your legs and stomach with no downsides, so they're good pants to wear. Then flee the city. Or stay and fight the UC, if you prefer. You have fought anti-slavers, and now you can fight pro-slavers. It's good to balance out your activities for maximum productivity, you know. And to increase your durability, you should buy a pair of KLR series legs for the really tough fights, because these things have a crap ton of hit points on them. Getting low on cash for such a purchase? Collect bounties. 
beat down the Dust King's gate with your bare fists, and go collect your 35,000 bucks. Easy money. If you purchase a membership with the Shinobi Thieves, then you can buy a Thieves backpack from them to store your extra limbs. It may say that it negatively affects your combat skills, but this doesn't apply to martial arts or dodge, so it's actually fine. And now it's time to upgrade your pants to masterwork, and I know just where to find a pair. So cruise over to the Shek capital, Odmog, and find Tostada the Stone Golem. As you can see, she's not very friendly, so put your big boy legs on and teach her some manners. Of course, her bodyguards are pretty strong, so you probably shouldn't fight them all in such a tightly enclosed little room. Just focus on taking her down as quickly as possible, and boom! There we have it, Masterwork Samurai Pants. Now just grab that blue babe and run for the hills. Her simp might not be too happy about it, so just give him the old boot of paralysis and be on your merry way. Tostada's worth 50,000 cats in the Holy Nation, and even though they'll attack you on sight, you can still drop her into one of their cages and collect your money. Then run like the wind before they catch you. Or stay and fight them. Whatever you want to do. The Western Hive will let you rent their skeleton repair beds for pretty low cost, so make sure you visit them from time to time to keep your body in shape. Now use your newly acquired wealth to buy an extra pair of industrial lifter arms. They say an army marches on its stomach, but in reality an army marches on its legs. So if you have an extra pair of arms and legs, you can swap them out whenever they get broken and keep on fighting. Now that's not to say you'll be invincible, and there are a couple of enemies you probably won't be able to beat. King of the Southern Hill, for example, has such ridiculous stats that it'll be hard to even get a single hit in on him while fighting him. So yeah, King and Tin Fist are probably off the table for a solo martial artist. But still, you'll be able to take down almost anyone else without too much hassle. Lord Buckethead? No problem. Emperor Pingu? Easily dealt with. President Snow? He'll be needing a prosthetic leg. Your martial arts prowess has empowered you to enact poetic justice. You can kick the snot out of misogynists. You can beat the crap out of feminists. On this day, equality has been achieved. And at this point, you've pretty much peaked in terms of self-improvement. So yeah, that's it. That's how you punch Kenshi. If you want a final challenge for yourself, then go into the main menu, Import your save with the dead NPCs option unticked, and this will restore Catlon to his original condition, so you can go and fight him for real this time.